Alrighty, we are here. Welcome to the next project, guys. So let's go take a look. So that's it right there. Welcome to what we are calling, well, at least the tentative name for right now, is the Partridge House because of that guy right there. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Partridge House here for our final episode. I can't believe it, construction is over, but we're finally here. And I figured what better way to end this project than to give you guys a full tour. Sorry if you can hear all those birds in the background, they are going nuts so around me, but uh, it's kind of nice to hear, you know? Spring is just around the corner, even though it feels like we still are in the middle of winter. Let me show you how much snow we still have here. Far too much for this time of year. But before we get inside and show you guys what's going on in there, we'll give you a quick update on how we finished out the exterior to give it a little bit more curb appeal and just make the house look a little better, especially from the inside. So the first thing we did was get rid of all those old awnings above the windows. We did keep the one above the door because I do believe it's still functional, keeping that snow and rain off people leaving and entering the house. But back to those ones above the windows, they had to go. With them gone, it allows so much more light to get inside the house. And then second, to add a little bit more pop to the outside, we went ahead and created those modern shutters. If you miss it, I'll throw a link up in the corner and it kind of walks you through a DIY tutorial how to build them. Very, very easy project. But enough out here, it is still cold outside. Let's head on in. So when we walk into the house here, we walk into a nice, bright, and spacious living room. And if you remember back when we originally bought the house, that really wasn't the case. So before we had those dark red kind of shag carpet floors, those really tan or beige walls, and that big awning that was hanging out over top of the window, which really kind of made the space look dark and dingy and kind of separate. Now, when you come back, we have a bright living room. Those, that awning is gone. We have tons of light coming in. We have this beautiful built-in all the way across the back of the wall. So game storage, travel knickknacks, pictures, really anything, or a reading nook. You can really make it into whatever you want it to be. And it leaves the opportunity also to take down this middle kind of picture, where are we going here, over there? This kind of pictured wallpaper we framed in. And because it's just peel and stick, it can come off and it makes a perfect place for a TV and kind of a full TV surround if you want it. So just a few steps out of the living room, you can see the kitchen there, we'll get to that later, but we head down kind of the hallway towards the bedrooms and the bathroom. And the first thing you'll notice is that kind of nice feature door and feature kind of end that we created for the linen closet. And again, the reason behind that is we had originally just a dark kind of looking door without much character, and this gives it a little bit of life. So, you know, it's nothing super fancy, but you open it up, you still get that nice mahogany door inside, but it's clean, it's white, it's all been trimmed out, and it looks really nice compared to, well, what used to be not so nice. So if we take our first left off the hallway, we have just a nice spare bedroom, new light fixtures, all of the wood trim in the whole house, the doors, everything has all been sanded, restained, and repolyed. So it's nice, it's clean, it's new looking. If we head to the back of the bedroom or back bedroom in the house, again, new light fixture, all the wood redone. And in this room, we added kind of an accent wall of wallpaper. So if you remember, we did a five minute Friday on how to install peel and stick wallpaper. And that just gives a little bit of something to the room. So it's not just kind of a white box. But again, if whoever buys the place really doesn't like it, it's easy to go ahead and replace. Now across from that, we move and head over into the master. So in this one, we managed to find a nice mid-century modern light fixture, which we were able to reuse in here. But the real kind of piece de resistance of this room is that feature wall on the back. So if you remember back to one of our earlier videos here at the Partridge House, we kind of went through a step-by-step -step process on how we went about building this. And it's probably been the single most complimented feature so far in the whole house. As we leave the main bedroom here, or the master bedroom, we head across and we have the main bath. Now, this is probably one of the rooms that underwent the biggest transformations in the whole house. If you remember when we bought the house, there was that walk-in shower with the sliding glass doors, kind of the gold hardware, and nothing really looked clean and finished and well done. So that all got pulled out. 
we ended up going right back and redoing all the drain work and plumbing in here. So our plumbers came in, they did a fantastic job on that, and now we know everything is just functioning perfect. The other big thing I'm a firm believer of when it comes to bathrooms is that they should be functional and bright and airy. So for that, for us, that meant putting a bathtub back in here. If any family was to come around and wanted to buy a house, you know, you need somewhere to wash the kids or you need somewhere to have a soak after, just or just wanting to relax and, and have a soak in a bathtub. So the other thing we went ahead and did is we added a smaller but more spacious floating vanity that actually allowed for some storage and it made everything look a little bit bigger in here and a little bit cleaner. So when you start a renovation, you have these ideas in your mind and you create this kind of vision of what you're hoping a room turns out like. And for this bath, I was kind of visioning these vertical lines going up to a bold dramatic ceiling, these touches of black to kind of ground the space and give it that touch of modernism and elegance and simplicity. And I have to say, this, this bathroom turned out kind of exactly how I was hoping it to. You know, we added this shiplap kind of vertical shiplap, if you will, that draws your eye upward. We paired that with the skinny, long subway tiles, again, stacked in a vertical pattern to kind of carry that theme forward. And then we finished everything off with this dark blue and kind of bold ceiling. But I have to say the ceiling doesn't actually feel like it's any lower, like it's pulling down on top of you. The room still feels airy and open. And then just the little touches of black throughout, like the faucet and the shower taps and the tandle bar, just all of it kind of tie everything in together and make the house and the room feel cohesive. So we head on out of the bathroom now and kind of head on to that room that everybody loves in a house tour, which is the kitchen. So a kitchen, another room in here that underwent just a massive transformation from what it originally was. So if you remember back to that original house tour we took and we walked into the kitchen, the first thing that grabbed my attention and it may have grabbed yours as well was the fact that there was carpet on the ground and not a pretty carpet either. It was this kind of camo indoor outdoor baby poop green. It just was not awesome. On top of that, we had the old appliances. We had wood cabinets that I thought were gonna be totally not reusable in this project, but keepable and reusable for other projects down the road. It turns out they were all built in place and the thing I hate to do the most is take them apart piece by piece by piece, but that is really just what needed to be done here. But eventually, we did get this room back down to kind of a bare bone surface. Again, redid all the drain work, all the water lines so that you know you're coming into a nice, functioning, clean kitchen. And then we went about starting to add our own touches and our own pieces to the space. The first change we made in here was to rearrange the layout and that really meant moving some appliances. So originally the fridge was over by the range, but we went ahead and moved that to the different wall or another wall here in the kitchen. But what it allowed us to do is actually create some space now on each side of the range. So you have prep work and can actually work in the kitchen functionally without having a fridge sandwiched right beside your range. What it also allowed us to do though was add some countertop over by the fridge. So this gives us just another prep station or a place to put you know, a coffee bar or Really, whatever you want, you can stick the microwave, your toaster, all that over there, leaving your main countertops open. So speaking of countertops, we were actually able to double the amount of countertop square footage in here and increase its functionality just by a simple rework of the appliances. Finally, to round out this space, there's a few simple design touches we included to kind of warm up and ground the space. So the first being is we continued that theme of black accents in the kitchen faucet, in the light above the dining table. And the second major thing we included was some wood elements in here to really warm up the space. So the big one being the floating bamboo wood shelves that are stained in kind of a nice early American color to match all of the woodwork around the windows. So that pretty well does it for the kitchen as far as kind of the finished look goes. I'm happy with how things turned out. I'm happy we splurged some money on the backsplash, especially carrying it up all the way to the ceiling behind the 
range. I think it really looks good. It kind of blends into that geometric pattern we have in the master bedroom wall and the feature at the end of the hallway. And all of these little elements, again, like the black elements, kind of help pull a whole house together. But on that note, why don't we head down the back stairs here and head on and check out the basement. What can I say about this basement other than what a difference? So yeah, it's still long and narrow, but that's just kind of the way these houses were built because these center walls are load-bearing and they have a footing built all the way underneath them that holds up the rest of the house. So we can't just go willy-nilly opening them up. But some of the things we did down here to make the basement feel not like a giant bowling alley was add in this divider that you see here at the center. So it's flanked on either end by these built-ins See there and there, and then we've got a beam heading across the top. And what that does is just kind of separate the space to the eye and gives you the feeling of having two completely different rooms down here, even though it is one large space. And again, we've repeated those built-ins on this side to give that extra storage and extra functionality that every family really needs. So at the back of the basement, we have another bedroom here. To give the bedroom a little bit of pop, we tied in some more of that blue color and put it on the closet doors as well as the interior of all the bedroom doors. But that fourth bedroom for a house just increases the functionality and gives you just so many or a myriad of options, you know, sewing room, office, another bedroom for a kid, whatever it really needs to be. And then just off the bedroom, we have another bathroom down here, finishing off the basement space. So again, you'll notice we added another built-in to this bathroom, and in this case, it's a nice black accented built-in, so the black blends in with the rest of those elements throughout the house, kind of grounding the room. But not only that, we like to add these into every little nook and cranny we can, just to increase the functionality, increase the storage, because it's something we're all after in a house. All right, so through this door is the final room in the basement, which is our laundry room. A nice, big, clean, finished off space. We've got extra storage through there under the door that kind of fills that whole area under the stairs. We've got a closet in here for all those winter jackets or jackets that are out of the season so they don't clog up your front entrance. We've got another storage closet over there with more shelves. And again, we have that little pop of blue throughout, so the door is there, the closets. That just give the laundry room a little bit of funness and not kind of just a dreary old basement laundry room that they can sometimes turn out to be. Alrighty everybody, that does it. Thanks a ton for sticking through it and sticking with us throughout this entire renovation series at the Partridge House. You know, it's awesome to take a house like this that's got great bones and has lots of great years left in it and make it into something new and functional that another family can enjoy for years and years to come. There isn't a need to kind of contribute to that environmental waste and just tear another house down to put another infill up. So with that, like I said, thanks a ton for watching, guys. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and click that little bell icon so you get notifications every time we release a new video. And we'll see you in the next one.